Parker and Danny Green are your one and your two. And in the middle, out of Brazil, taking with the 28th pick back in 2008, the 6'11 pivot man, Tiago Splitter. Then there's Kawhi Leonard, and it's Duncan in at the four. And for Boston, the speedy backcourt of Rondo and Bradley. And it's Kelly Olynyk out of Gonzaga, a seven-footer with inside-outside offensive skills in the middle at center. He's thrilled for this one. Everyone will be watching now how he does in his first NBA official game. Then there's Green, and it's Bass in at the four slot. Parker dishes to Green. Spurs working the ball around now. Duncan gets the bucket. Coach Popovich was fine last season for sitting out his top players in a nationally televised matchup against the Heat. I certainly understand the league's posture there, and it was a lot said about it. Yet, for a veteran team like the Spurs with championship aspirations, I understand resting key players during the course of the regular season. So the San Antonio Spurs able to put the first points up on the board. Six to shoot. Leonard against Green. Good! I'll tell you what I love about him. His ability to finish even while absorbing contact. He is so strong. Even with defenders hanging all over him, he continues to finish at the basket. And Steve, just like you when you shot, you had a favorite spot on the floor when you played. His favorite <laughs> spot seems to be that three from the corner. Yeah. And back to that fine for Popovich, a quarter of a million dollars. Steve, that'll leave a dent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, you know, Popovich enjoys tweaking the league at times. Uh, this was clearly an effort to do that. But, uh, look, I think it's it's good for him to, to actually, you know, kind of let the league know every once in a while. Like, if you're going to give us that kind of schedule with my older team, I'm, you know, I'm going to sit them down once in a while. Stupendous rush to the rim and a mighty slam on the end of it. But through the teeth of some pretty soft D it. I can't help but say that. Well, let's see how that impacts things here. Because those kinds of plays sometimes can be game changers on both sides. You knew that at some point the window for the group of Celtics that had won a title was going to close. I mean, it was inevitable. But last year seemed like they were going to go for one last to rise. They added some depth and looked to reload for another run. The free throw drops for Duncan. And getting back to the Celtics and Rondo's injury, a lot of people expected them to start the rebuilding process. Ended up standing pat at the deadline, Steve, even though there was, it seemed, a lot of interest. You know, you want to give that group, KG and Pierce and Rondo, you want to give them uh, another run. And they had their last hurrah. It, they didn't get it finished. And, and now you start the rebuilding project. So a lot of trades, a lot of movement over the summer. But I like the fact that they, they gave that club one more run. Duncan with the block. And they're moving it up. Here's Splitter. Again, the miss by the Spurs. The Celtics have gone two or three here to start off the game. Bradley passes to Rondo. And the call will be against Tony Parker. That's his first foul. The first quarter of action, two minutes in. And Olenek kicks to Rondo. And that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Now, Kevin, here's what the Celtics head coach had to say when we spoke just a few minutes ago. I asked him about how his team was going to handle the veterans of the Spurs. And he said, there really isn't a whole lot that Duncan and them haven't seen. So you can't surprise them one way or another. Really, it comes down to us being as careful with the ball as they are and being efficient in our possessions. Sounds simple enough, gentlemen. Thanks a lot, Doris. Well, Kawhi Leonard taken 15th overall in the 2011 draft. And believe it or not, he's the Spurs' highest drafted rookie since they took Tim Duncan number one overall back in 97. It just shows you the legacy of the Spurs' success over the years. Now here's Rondo. Back to the miss from Splitter. And the whistle blows. It'll be on Tiago Splitter. That's his first foul. Yeah, you know, these calls can be some of the toughest in the game for the officials. It all happened so fast, but I really think that was the right call. The defender was not really set in that situation. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. And it's Rondo penetrating. And you can count it. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it three. 
And going back to Kawhi Leonard, he earned minutes in Coach Popovich's rotation from the first game on. And part of the reason he did, he's got great versatility defensively primarily, but he's a quick learner, quick study, understands things, doesn't take long to pick things up. And when you're a first-year player, that can separate you from a lot of guys and get you in the rotation, especially with a veteran team like the Spurs. And that drops, so they now lead by one. And what an amazing run it was for the Spurs last year in the postseason. You know, swept the Lakers, you know, survived Golden State, and then dismantled Memphis on their way to the NBA Finals. And then, of course, uh, were seconds away from another championship banner. Here's Rondo following the basket by Tim Duncan. He feeds it to Bradley. And the foul called on Daniel Green. That's his first foul. Morris Diaz checked in for Tim Duncan. And here's Rondo. And the pass to Olenek. Wide open. And it's good coming on the assist by Rajon Rondo. Olenek's got his second bucket. Now getting back to the Spurs, they look better and better as they went deeper into the playoffs. Clark, Heat were thought to be the heavy favorites at the start of the NBA postseason. But when they met in the finals, uh, thoughts on who would win, I think, were pretty much split. Yeah, and eventually, you know, this was one heck of a series because the Spurs not only had experience and talent, but they had multiple options offensively and did such a terrific job sharing the ball. They took the Miami Heat to the limit, but at the end of the day, it came down to... LeBron James and Dwayne Wade rising to the challenge. So San Antonio going with an almost entirely new group here. San Antonio trailing here. He dishes it to Bellinelli. Now the feed to Diaw. He kicks it to Bonner. Sellinger's there. Fires from 14, and it's off the back rim. No good. For Boston, they've gotten four of six field goal attempts to drop in the first quarter. Rondo dishes to Humphreys. And that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. We've got 155 left in the first. Rondo, good. Perfect inbounds pass and an easy two points. Spurs trail by three. Parker kicks to Bellinelli. Dives for it. He gets stolen by Sean. And pushing it up, here's Boston. Leaves running, stolen by Ginobili. And a fast break now for the Spurs. Ginobili leading the charge. Bonner's shot good. Bonner's got his first points in this one. For Boston, they've gone five of seven today so far. Nice shooting to get this game underway. Rondo kicks to Humphreys. Out to Lee. Back to Humphreys. Lee outside. Six on the shot clock. Tries again. Rejected by Diaz. And a fast break now for the Spurs. Here's Ginobili, and the layup is good. And the lead changes hands once again. There has been no separation between these two teams tonight. What an intriguing basketball game, that's for sure. Now here's Rondo. He has five. Lee outside. Well, he's an athletic two-guard, Kevin. A good defender, great quickness, and he gets his share of steals. I'm a big fan of Courtney Lee. Yeah, I like his commitment defensively, Steve. You're right on the money. Now, one of those players who's just interested in glamour plays. When he plays, it is for 100% of the time, 100% of the effort. And he makes the first. And as you might expect for the team with the second-best record in the West, the Spurs dominated the East last season, played each team twice for a total of 30 games, and went 25-5 and five in that stretch. And Clark, back to what you said about the Spurs in the East, it was far and away the best record against the conference, Steve, for a team in the West. 
Yeah, the second best record was Memphis with 22 wins. So kind of scary to think that they rested their big stars a few times against teams in the East, and they were still able to put up that kind of a record. Sullinger defended by Bonner, and there's the call on Ginobili. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. The Celtics have gone three for three at the line tonight. Around a year ago, they converted about 78% of their free throws as a team, so pretty solid there. Yeah, they had the kind of success from the line that would make any coach breathe a sigh of relief, guys. That free throw good from Sullinger. That free throws good from Sullinger. There's 18 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. There's the dish to Bellinelli. To the inside. Here's Bonner. Lays it up and banks it in. Bonner's got his second basket of the game. Guys, what a wild first half this has been. I'd say, I mean, oh. eight lead changes. That speaks for itself. Mm. Yeah, back and forth start for sure. This game is setting up to be awfully competitive. And a high-scoring first quarter. Both teams really filling it up. Spurs lead by one. And we'll be back in just a moment with the start of the second quarter. Neither team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. And guys, what's your take on the Spurs so far? And you could see early on, guys, they were going to go inside and try to establish their offense in the paint area. That's exactly what they've done. And I think that's exactly where they should continue to attack moving forward, Steve. Boston trailing. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. Doris, over to you. Gentlemen, last year, Greg Popovich received a quarter of a million dollar fine from the league for sitting out his starters in that game against Miami. They cracked down, but it wasn't the first time he rested his top players on a back-to-back. -back. Pop explained the philosophy this way, saying, quote, we're making a wiser decision and not a macho decision. It's about health and safety of players so that we have a shot at the end of the year. If I was taking my son or daughter to the game, I'd be disappointed. So I understand that perspective. Hopefully, they'll understand my perspective. My priority is the basketball team and what is best for it. Guys, it's always a balancing act. It certainly is. Thank you, Doris. And it's good. What a finish with that hoop. Spurs shooting impressively throughout at 62%. You know, we saw the promise last season of Jared Sullinger, a wide body with a really high basketball IQ, just very skilled as a passer and a low post score. San Antonio making a switch here. Duncan's checked in. And we play just over a minute of basketball here in the second quarter. 11 feet away. That falls. Nice feed that time for Mano Ginobili. Ginobili's got three assists in the game. And for Jared Sullinger, he may have slipped in the draft, but a great situation Clark a lot of people feel for him in Boston. Could not agree more. I tell you, playing alongside Kevin Garnett, played for Doc Rivers in his first year, I mean, you, you're going to learn a lot from those two about how to play in the NBA. I think he's a, ahead of his years as far as in basketball acumen. He's what we call an old head. Really has a nice understanding of the game. Rondo passes to Lee. Back to Rondo. A rebound by the Spurs. And we're about two minutes into the second quarter here. Dishes at the park. Lee with the steal. And pushing it up. Here's Boston. Humphreys kicks to Lee. And that is good. That is a terrific effort on the shot. He's giving up a lot of size, but still finds a way to score. I don't think that affected him in the least, though, Steve. I mean, he made it look like he was the bigger guy. Knocks it loose. Ball is attacking. The 15-footer, good. And the Celtics lead by one. And an important part of every team's game, a look at the hustle stats for Boston. And they've come out in attack mode defensively, applying pressure and stealing the ball repeatedly. They also came out of the locker room with their running shoes on. I mean, their transition game has been full throttle. Diaw can't hit. Well defended. And he's not someone who responds well to that kind of defensive pressure. 
You know, it's always strange to see how a team will react when they lose one of their biggest stars. Last season, Celtics were thought to be dead in the water when Rondo tore his ACL, but they actually rallied and went on the winning streak after the injury. A different look now for San Antonio. Splitter is checked in for Diaw. Kawhi Leonard comes in for Mono Ginobili. And it's Green in for Bellinelli. Green with a screen on Leonard. About three minutes played so far in the second quarter. And it's Lee penetrating. And finish off by Bass. Reverse that one. Oh, now that was nice. Real nice. The agility on this play. Yeah, you love that body control. Ooh. Oh, that one had it all, guys. Power and grace. Just beautiful. Spurs trail by three. Well, Clark, as you said, with Rondo and the Celtics, they would go on to win the next seven right after his injury, and overall, Steve played better than expected the rest of the way. Sometimes that's the way these things go, Kevin. A star player goes down, everybody else kind of steps up, and uh, instead of feeling sorry for themselves, they use it as a rallying cry. And all those role players for Boston really picked up the extra slack, and I thought they made a great push uh, to end that season after the Rondo injury. Anjan Rondo is checked in for San Antonio. The Spurs shooting their third free throw attempt of the game. That one misses for Splitter. Guys, the Celtics went from being a powerhouse in the east to middle of the pack last season, but they still protected their home court as well as anybody. Easy to find inspiration here with the parquet floor under your shoes and the banners hanging over top. This is shot. Good. Things have changed a little bit here in the second quarter, guys, and we're seeing them start to convert a lot of second-chance opportunities. Yeah, and I'm sure the coach has to be happy about this. I mean, the hustle underneath is paying off in a big way. No good from Duncan. You do have to love the parquet floor here, as you said, Clark. A pride, certainly a factor last season as the Celtics were able to finish Steve with a 27-13 and record here at their home. And even though the Celtics would end up just as the seventh seed in the East, you knew they would control their home floor but just because of their veteran experience, their talent, their coaching. Uh, so they were real, really able to, to ride that home court into the playoffs. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Burke. Thank you, Kevin. Tony Parker and teammate Boris Diaw have known each other since high school back in France. Boris says of Tony, quote, he's a point guard who can do it all. He can be an organizer and make the team play. Other times, he's going to be a scoring point guard. It's pretty rare to have both. And guys, Coach Popovich talked about how Parker's decision-making has matured as far as reading when to pass and when to score. He's found a great balance as the years have gone on, guys. He can do it all, Doris. Pass, shoot, a special talent. The drive by Green hit his leg. And the ref saying he kicked it. Tony Parker's checked in for Mono Ginobili. San Antonio with the ball. They trail by three. Split it. No luck. Nice D from Olenek. Just getting on the court last season was a big triumph for Jeff Green, who was forced to sit out a year after undergoing heart surgery. You look at how he progressed over the season, and he got better with each month. Really inspirational. And the whistle blows in the backcourt violation. He went over and back. One fifteen left in the first half of basketball. Leonard dishes to Parker. Back to Leonard. Leans from outside. Will not go. This is off the front eye. Going back to Jeff Green, the Celtics had to be encouraged to see the way he progressed as last season went on. I thought last year was, was good for him. He emerged confidence-wise. He seemed to take on a bigger role in Boston. And I think he, he started to justify that four-year contract he signed with the Celtics. And it's Green missing. They've been strong on the boards. There's no disputing that. That's what the box score says. Still anybody's game, though. Can't get it to go. And the Spurs going the other way now. It's stolen by Bass. Kicks it to Rondo. Pass to Bass. Baseline jumper. Cut the bucket. Bass has got six points. It was a slow start for him. But he started to take off since we hit the second quarter, guys. 
Now, here's Diop. He's guarded by Bass. Once again off the mark by San Antonio. Now, Green. Close game as we wrap up the second quarter. Celtics out in front. They're up by five. Well, folks, stay tuned for the halftime show with Damon Bruce for all the highlights from our first half. Now, presented by Sprint. And welcome to halftime, everyone. Great one underway in Boston. The Celtics taking care of business. They've done a great job closing out their defensive possessions, grabbing boards, great rebounding. There's been some great work by Brandon Bass in this one. He's picked up half a dozen points and has helped out a bit on the boards as well. And this dedicated Spurs team is weathering the storm. We've seen all these blocks, and they are locked in defensively, giving up no easy buckets. Our leading scorer, the big fundamental, Tim Duncan. He's got eight points, and it's been a good overall defensive game for him. He's brought a nice intensity to the floor in this one. And back to Boston we go. Thanks for being with us. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. And we welcome you back to more NBA action. Players looking hydrated and plenty of Gatorade to help them get their job done tonight. One of the top stories here, Tim Duncan getting it done today. Yeah, it's been a lockdown defensive effort from him through the first two quarters. He's just swatting shots away. Well, the reach and the timing he's shown to get to some of these shots has been really impressive. He looks like he has telescope arms out there. He's like an octopus. <laughs> Bradley can't get it to go. Oh, that's a frustrating one there. Easy look at the hoop. You know, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last season, guys, was that they were able to finish games strong. You think a group of vets might run out of gas, but the opposite was true with this group. They turned it up down the stretch and were one of the most productive teams in the league in terms of fourth quarter points. Parker passes to Green. Back to Parker. Nice ball boomer by San Antonio. Splitter defended by Olenek. Splitter misses. Well, Clark, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last year in the fourth was because they have so many options when possessions, you know, Steve Stark getting critical and the game is tight. Well, no question. You've got Parker to create off the dribble. You can always throw it into the low post to Duncan. Uh, but on top of that, you've got a roster full of guys who understand how to play the game and, and know how to play each other. Just the experience that this group has gained together over the years, I think, allows them to execute under pressure. Rondo against Parker. Outside Rondo, he passes to Brandon. Back to Rondo. Shot clock at six. That's good. Rondo's got seven points. And San Antonio calls the first time out of the game. Not many teams, guys, in the East did very well against the West last season. And that in mind, you could call Boston's 14-16 record against the conference better than most. Spurs trail by five. Parker kicks to Duncan. Back to Parker. Pass to Green. Feeds it to Parker. Duncan outside. The feather touch on the finger roll. Beautiful. Ten points for him. And for the Celtics against the West, even in the shortened season, they were having a lot of trouble with some of the bigger lineups, Steve. More of the up-tempo teams out West. Well, the Celtics were old and a little bit small, too. Kevin Garnett played center last year, so they played a lot of small lineups. And when you're small and you're old, sometimes, you know, that's going to cost you, particularly on the road. Celtics leading by three. Bradley with the ball. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Outside Rondo. Bass with a screen for Rondo. From 12 feet out. That's good on the jump shot. Rondo's got four points now in the quarter. Spurs trail by five. You know, there aren't too many drive and dish point guards out there anymore, but Rondo is the epitome of that type of guard in the NBA. He is always looking to make a move and create space for a teammate, and his assist totals reflect that. While he defended the shot, got back into play, and grabbed the board. Nice play. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Spurs will take it. 
<laughs> tell you what, wandering aimlessly out of bounds like that might earn him a ticket to the bench. San Antonio making a switch here. Diaz checked in. A little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the third. Well, Clark, you talked about Rondo's playmaking. I think Steve and I agree. He's led the league in assists uh, per game the last two seasons in that very important category, Steve, and I think that speaks volumes. It's pretty incredible what Rondo has been able to accomplish in the NBA. Fell to late in the first round to the Celtics uh, back in his draft class, but here he is developing into one of the top point guards in the league. Here's Green. Puts up the baby hook. Oh, and the whistle was blown in the play as he was fouled in the act of shooting. Wasn't sure we were going to see a call there, but the officials saw the contact in two free throws. Splitters checked in for San Antonio. For Boston, they have been good at the line so far, 5 of 5. You know, the Spurs really have a cohesive culture, and part of that is something that Greg Popovich has been able to do, and that's being able to join guys together that normally might not hang out. For instance, you had Matt Bonner taking Steven Jackson out to a Coldplay concert last season. One way to help guys get to know each other off the court, and it helps them on the court. Boston leading by six. Rondo drives in, gets it to go. Rondo's got 11. And back to Popovich and the Spurs, he really makes a point of getting to know his players and have them get to know one another. That's right, Kevin. He, he likes to have his players have a sense of perspective about the world. He, he wants them to know that there are other things going on besides the NBA. In fact, back in 2012, he had the players watching the presidential debates together. And Boris Diaw picks up the foul. That's foul number two for him. And out of bounds is San Antonio gains possession. Well, they couldn't hook up there on what's really a pretty basic pass. Just over three and a half minutes through the third quarter of play now. Defended by Olenek. The jump hook and the basket by Diaz. That's the kind of aggressive and assertive play they need as we get closer and closer to crunch time. No question. Pound it into the painted area and continue to put pressure on that defense. Now here's Bass. Guarded closer. Doubled by Diaz. Just five to shoot. Rondo on top, covered by Parker. Rondo with another miss. That's a shot that he sometimes struggles with, but you can't fault him for taking it when the defense backs off like that. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Well, their energy is lacking, and they've got to start playing harder and battle down in the paint. Bradley dishes to Olenek. The fadeaway. Again, the miss by the Celtics. He's not necessarily a strong inside presence, but he needs to polish those chances off. Diaw, he's guarded by Bass. And the rebound goes to Rajon Rondo. Celtics leading by four. And that one's good. Rondo's got eight points here in this quarter. Man, a gaping hole in the defense that time, and he didn't waste any time getting through it. Leonard attacking. They grabbed their own miss. Green. And they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. If you battle for the offensive rebound and come up with it, you're guaranteed a high-quality shot on a follow just like he got there. Looking at who's out there now for the Spurs. Matt Bonner, he's checked in for Splitter. And it's Duncan in for Boris Diaz. Free throw good green. Boy, this is a neat story, guys. Danny Green was undrafted out of North Carolina. And another nice find for perhaps the best organization in all of sports, the San Antonio Spurs. He's an excellent three-point shooter. Over 40% from three-point range for his career. He helps that team spread the floor. And that energizes their high-powered offense. Leonard with the ball. 
Guarded now by Joe Wallace. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. And the Spurs with some changes. Ginobili comes in for Kawhi Leonard. And it's Bellinelli in for Daniel Green. Twenty-seven seconds left to play in the third. And it's Wallace penetrating. Passes to Humphreys. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Easy call there. No question about that one. You can hear the impact from where I am. The Celtics shooting their seventh and eighth attempts at the foul line tonight. And he can't get the first one. The Celtics making a switch here. 